Well. I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Inkscape is full of special tools and hidden features that allow you to make complicated designs easily. This tutorial, we're going to cover one that is appropriately named Knot. You can find it under Path Effects Knot. And what it lets you do is you can take some shapes or objects, and if you apply the effect, it will interlock them automatically. So if you look at this center square, it goes over this one, then under, then over, then under, which is fine, pretty simple. But again, that will let you make some very complicated things such as these Celtic knots that we'll do today. So I'll walk you through step by step. It's very easy, they're fun, and let's do it. Let's set up our canvas so we're all working at the same scale. Under File, go to Document Properties. You could also hit this piece of paper with the wrench icon and you'll see under here we have the A4 page size. You can change it to all these different settings, but today we'll do A4. Change the orientation to landscape and under page color, if you hit this right here, you can make it black. And a quick shortcut, if you want to resize the zoom to fit this exact page we just did, hit number five. Or you can choose this icon here that looks like a magnifying glass with a rectangle in it like that. Here is how the knot feature works on the most basic level. I'll grab the squares and rectangles tool. If I hold shift and control together, I can draw open what looks like a white square with a gold orange stroke. We can change that by going to object, fill and stroke. And over here, you'll see a fill and stroke menu pop up. If you're on the fill tab, we actually don't want to fill for this exercise. We're going to X out of that. So now there is no fill and we're left with this outline of it. We'll go over to the stroke tab and we can change that to plain white. Go one more tab over to stroke style. And here's where we can change the width. Why don't we do 5.0? I'm set to millimeters. And if you look down here under cap, these are sometimes overlooked, but we want to go to the furthest one to the right, square cap. It won't matter right now for this first example, but it's going to come into play when we get more complicated. Make sure you're on square cap. All right, go to selector tool. We have the first one selected. I'll do control D to duplicate it. I can drag it anywhere I want. Now I'll click in no man's land to select both at the same time and do control G, which groups them. Once they're grouped, the path effects can be applied. So if your path effects menu isn't open, which it probably won't be, go to path, path effects, the menu pops open blank, hit the plus sign and you'll get your live path effect selector. Look around, this is always a different configuration. You want the one that says not. And there you go. If you look down here, the gap length, the default is 3.0 and it's in units of stroke width. So 3.0 millimeters. You can change that if you do 4.0, it makes it wider or you can make it more narrow depending on what you want to do. And if you want even more control, hit edit paths by node and you'll see, well, you can't see it that well here. Switcher size 15, let's change it to 25. You see this blue circle with an arrow? That's what's called the switcher. If I click on the center node, it will change if the shape is going over or under. So now the first square is going over. Now it's connected, now it's going under. To go to the next crossover area, just drag the node to the next part. Same thing, click it for over, connected, or under. Now, if you want to change the colors and things, you do have to do one more step. With the selector tool, grab everything and choose path, stroke to path. You notice that your path effects menu has gone away and that's what you want. Now you can manipulate this and change the colors at will. I'll go to fill, you can change it to red, yellow, whatever you feel like. You could also add a stroke around it to have a more interesting design like that. Moving on. The next basic level of study I want to show you, let's go to the circles and ellipses tool. Again, if you hold shift and control together, you'll make a perfect circle. Change the stroke back to white and we'll make it wider 5.0. This is a precursor to the advanced design we'll do just next. I want to change this before we do path effects. Right now, it's a basic shape we built right off of the tool itself. Go to path, object to path. Locking that in will help the knot feature work better. Also, we could do control D to duplicate, but that I've noticed causes some complications as well. So instead, do right click, copy, right click, paste. I'll bring these two overlapping. Select both. Over here, you see the Align and Distribute menu. You can also find the menu under Object, Align and Distribute. If you're on the Align tab, relative to last selected, I want to hit this one here, Align Bottom Edges. Now we know they're perfectly justified here. Control G groups them together. Back to your Path Effects menu. If you need it again, it's under Path, Path Effects. Hit the plus. 
go back to not, and there it is again. So we have the default 3.0 gap length. I wanted to show you this because if you're happy with this or if you're prototyping and doing all sorts of different designs, you wanna make them quickly, it looks fine. But if you zoom in, it doesn't look as fine as you want. It looks like it's not perfectly done. I'll show you how to fix this now, moving on to the ultimate project here. Let's make a Celtic knot. We'll start again with the circle. Draw it open, shift and control, nice and even. Go to path, object to path. Don't duplicate it, do right click copy, right click paste, line it up a bit, get both of them, align and distribute menu, justify on the bottom. Now we'll go to path, intersection. I need to make one of these eye shapes and I'll grab it by the bottom and stretch it out to wherever you see fit. Right about there is good. Hit it one more time until you see the handles that have a curve on the side. If you hold control and grab one of the handles, it will click over in increments until you see a square like that. That's what I want. I almost did control D, don't do that. Do copy, paste. Now I have two, I'll go up to my directionals. If you're on selector tool, hit the opposite direction, bring them close enough, grab them all and under align and distribute for last selected, hit vertical and horizontal axis. Now go to the circle tool, shift and control, grab a nice circle, eyeball it like that. We have to make it a path, object to path. Let's see how this one's looking. That was pretty lucky. You can resize it if you need to. I'm gonna keep it just like that. Now I'll grab a no man's land to collect all of them. They're all selected there, but I wanna justify them again. So relative to last selected, vertical, horizontal. Now they're all lined up. At this point, you can group them. Control G. Over to our path effects menu, hit the plus. I find not, and there it is. It's looking bad. So now we do have to clean this up a bit. A couple ways you can do it. First, you could try changing the gap length, 2.5. I'll stick with, I think I'll do 2.6. This will slow us down a bit because we need to clean this up. I'll show you how to do it in just a minute. First, let's make sure our over-unders are correct. If I go to edit paths by node, I see my switcher. Let's make that bigger, 25. And I try to just follow along one shape at a time. So on this left eye shape, we go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. So that one's good. Let's go this direction. It's going under, under again. We'll change that to an over. Now we're over. Over again, under, over, under, over, under, under, over. <laughs> It's good content, right? Now, mathematically, the circle should be correct because we just lined everything up. Done with that, go back to selector tool. Now, with the whole thing selected, grab everything, go to path, stroke to path. Here is why we changed that stroke style to the square cap. If I go to edit paths by node, click on one of them, and I zoom in, you can see I've got these two extra nodes. This is the square cap. And all I have to do is move them so they're better in line. Down here, check this out, measure. Hit this tool right here and you can draw between two points. So I know I'm 2.2 millimeters. Helps you be a little bit more accurate than eyeballing. And we'll move to the next one. Through the magic of editing, I'll do them all at once. Actually, just kidding. Before I go to the reveal with them all cleaned up, let me show you one of the hacks that I use. If I click on this middle shape right here, it doesn't matter which one it is, and I go to stroke and add my stroke to the width that I want. Now when I click on the other shape and go to edit paths by node, it's very easy to drag it right into place. Just makes it go faster. Okay, back to the editing. And there is the magic of editing. I'll take off the stroke. Here is our Celtic knot. Now there are other methods to make these with Inkscape and I've seen some great tutorials. Logos by Nick comes to mind. There is a rumor that Inkscape developers are currently working on a shape builder tool just like Adobe Illustrator has. I think it might make methods like this obsolete, but still the purpose of this tutorial is to show you the not feature. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you next time.